Oh, hi, Hillary. Um, you know, I've raised you the best that I could. And, and I know that in my heart, and I think you do too. Um, everybody has problems. You know, Nana had problems. Granddaddy has problems. Um, so I guess, you know, safety, if that's an issue for you, if I see my grandkids, you know, we, we could talk about that um, appropriately. I mean, you, you more than willingly left them both with me when I was pretty manic. I was, I was kind of going in and out of hospital stays, um, but I don't. I think everything went fine. I had a car, and we took them to the museum and stuff. I, I let the kids stay up as late as they wanted, which was kind of funny. Um, and then Callista woke up ready to go, but by the time we'd gone through the museum, she was she was pretty much passed out. She couldn't take it. But. Um, you know, the longevity of a relationship is undetermined. We don't know. We don't know when you or I or the kids are going to live or die. Um, and I know I, I could have treated my mom better sometimes. I think she took it on the jaw a number of times because of what she did to me in my teenage years. It was, it was, it was very hurtful. Um, but anyway, you have to grow up and get past that. So all I'm asking you is to to explore with your therapist a relationship. The only, you know, you're an adult, you get to make your own decisions. And it seems like you're doing pretty well. Um, but the, the fact is, is that I, I feel like I'm, I'm not a detriment to my grand, I, th I think the grandkids love to be with me. So um, I would just ex ask you to, you know, Kent, I love Kent. I went back to school to impress him. He never followed me. I didn't know he liked me. So I got married to Jerry, and then when I went back, Kent couldn't hardly stand up. He's so happy to see me. So even crazy bipolar people can have love. And that's all I'm asking for is try to, try to be lovingly supportive of me and my illness, if you can. Like, you brought me a sweatshirt to the hospital. Um, call me. But I've been out of the hospital two years now, and I have hypomania, and I still have some lows, but it's not where I can't sleep and when I, I get irritable if, I, if I'm not sleeping. Um, but anyway, so you can think about it and I'm going to start working and earning money to buy a car. I'm stable enough to do that and then I may get a car. Depending on, you know, to me my first calling is to be a grandma and that's an important role. I mean it really does leave some good memories with the kids. Plus I'm from, I'm I'm 30 years, I'm almost 30 years older than, I'm 24 years older than you. So, you know, my dad has problems, my mom had problems. But I do, I do miss having an adult daughter to talk to that can be sympathetic or empathetic. I have no idea why you're so angry. You said you told me, but you need to write it in a letter. Um, because I still... I lived at your house with you for two months, and the only one that got angry was you with me. And somehow, you've turned this bipolar into a sword or a knife just to stick in my back. And it's an illness. I mean, I suffer. Do you think it's fun going in a psychiatric hospital? No, it's life or death. You go in because you're either going to kill yourself, or you know you're going to do harm. You know it has. So a lot of times I have to lie and say I'm going to kill myself because they won't take me in with the bipolar. They're like, well, just go on being manic. But that is not good either. So I lie. I go in. Craig Deed's son had the same trouble. They didn't find a bed for him when he was manic. And then he went home and took a knife to his father and killed himself. Um, but now I take this very seriously. And um, if there's a place that I could improve, I mean, I don't think you should ask so much of me as to say, Mom, you can't have a mental illness, because that's just not realistic. I, I do have one.